Why do you seem so scared? All I wanted to do was play with you. You're not afraid of the dark, are you? Hi everyone, Professor Gustavo here. In this video, we are going to analyze the most common entries into the inside Sankaku position performed by the members of the Denaher Dev squad, arguably the best leg lockers in the game. Also, in the second half of this video, we are going to take a look at how to prevent this dangerous position. We want to help you identify those entries and patterns so you can add them into your offensive and defensive game. Before we get started, let's make sure we are on the same page. The inside Sankaku is widely regarded as the most dominant leg lock position for primarily three reasons. First, it offers me great control over my opponent's legs and hips while keeping his feet exposed, floating in the air, unable to get up. Second, it hides my feet from my opponent, making it very difficult for him to counter-attack me. Third, it offers me several submissions, including the most devastating of them all, the inside heel hook. If you are new to the leg lock game and still not familiar with the positions and terminology, please check out my video, A Guide to the Main Leg Lock Positions, where I explain everything you need to know. So let's start breaking down the entries into three major positions. Entries from the standing position, entries from the top position when I'm trying to pass my opponent's guard, and entries from the bottom position when I'm playing guard. Now, very important, most of the entries share a pattern that I want you to get familiar with. It's the back step scissoring motion. Let's take a look at this example from top half guard, which is a very popular entry into inside Sankaku. My right leg is already in between his legs because we are playing half guard. My opponent shot his underhook. I'm gonna back step in order to counter his underhook, but not only that, I want to also scissor my legs, scooping my knee behind his knee in order to isolate his leg and enter into the position. Immediately, if possible, I want to control the far leg as well so he doesn't escape as I have now options to attack my opponent. His feet is in the air, as we talked before, very hard to escape and get up, and now I can start chaining my submissions. You're going to see this back step scissoring motion over and over again as an entry to the inside Sankaku position. Let's take a look at some of the entries from a standing position and see that backstep scissors in action, which translates into the flying scissors takedown. There it is! Another common entry from the standing position is when the opponent is behind you. See that Gary Tony tries to stand up, he's gonna keep his right leg in between Shin and Yoki's leg and he's gonna execute a forward roll over his right shoulder looking to the outside which is gonna help him to transition into the outside Ashiganami and then into inside Sankaku. Here, same technique with a slight variation by Gary Tono. He has his right leg in between his opponent's leg, but he decides to roll over his outside shoulder, looking in. His opponent counters that by being heavy and sprawling on top of that leg, so Gary Tono just used the momentum, and again using that back step scissoring motion, comes on top, spinning into the inside Sankaku position, ready for the finish. Oh, damn! In addition to the backstep entry from half guard that we saw earlier, the squad has also been successful with two other entries from the top position. Here we can see Nick Ryan trying to pass his opponent's guard with a leg drag. His opponent defends, turning into him, exposing his leg for the inside Sankaku entry. Here again now with Gary Tono. Leg drag pass into inside Sankaku position. Another entry from the top position is using the over-under pass. See that Gordon Ryan staples his opponent's leg with his left shin as he controls the other leg with his left arm. All he's gonna do is swing his right leg around his opponent's leg, landing into the inside Sankaku position. Same pass here with Gary Tonon over-under. 
His right leg is pinning his opponent down. His left arm is controlling the other leg. Instead of falling on his back, he's going to actually do a forward row, landing into the inside Sankaku position. Oh my God! If you want more information on this entry, please watch Coach Firas Ahabi. He has an instructional video on this where he breaks it down with several details. Most of the entries from bottom position use that same movement pattern that we saw earlier, the back step scissoring. In order to accomplish that, first I have to establish inside foot position, which translates into the many variations of the butterfly guard, like half butterfly, axe butterfly, and shin on shin. The man whose feet dominate the inside position will always dominate the Ashigarami game. With that butterfly hook and help of my arms controlling the far leg, now I can start elevating my opponent and my hips, freeing my bottom leg in order to backstep scissoring my legs, locking up the inside Sankaku, redirecting my opponent to the ground. down and inside out I'm about to show you folks what it's all about now it's time for me to get on the mic and make this motherfucking party hot I'm taking it back to the old now that we know that our opponent wants to have at least one of his legs in between our legs and back step all we have to do is reverse engineering preventing those moves from happening in the first place and the way we're gonna do that is by leg pummeling keeping our legs safe and never allowing our opponent to establish dominant leg position. It's the same idea of arm pummeling, always looking to establish inside dominant position, or at least neutral. So let's take a look at some examples here. Gary Tonon preparing his standing entry, his right leg is already in between his opponent's leg. He's gonna roll forward, but his opponent wisely counters that by pummeling his leg and hooking Gary Tonon's ankle, avoiding the entry. Here a very nice prevention by JT Torres. Gary Tonon turns into the third position. JT shoots his hook trying to take Gary Tonon's back. But essentially he's putting Gary Tonon's leg in between his legs. So he realizes that and he's going to hook the far leg preventing Gary Tonon from back stepping entering into the inside Sankaku. Very smart job by JT here blocking the back stepping leg until he goes back to the top third position in a safer manner. Here we can see the bottom player constantly leg pummeling with his shin on shin guard, trying to maintain that inside position with his feet, never allowing his opponent to step in between his legs, preventing the back step entry. In case the opponent steps in, you can still prevent the entry by blocking the back stepping leg, hipping out, or turning into him and driving your knee down to the mat so he cannot scoop underneath it. For the top player, if my opponent already got inside position with his feet, my primary goal is pummeling my leg and hooking behind his knee, which allows me to pin his leg down, killing his hip mobility, so he cannot elevate his hips and clear his bottom leg, preventing the back step. But wait, there is more. Now that I've killed his hips, I can start passing his guard with knee slices, hip flops, to either side of his butterfly hook, and also transitions to the mount position. Lastly, but not least, a very important concept to help you prevent most leg locks. As we talked before, my opponent wants to elevate his hips, clear his bottom leg in order to backstep and redirect me to the mat. He can only do that if he moves his head close to my legs. Look at the final position for the submission, head by the feet. What if I can stop his head from moving underneath me, keeping my head by his head instead? Take a look at how Shani Ribeiro stops Gordon Ryan's entry by cross-facing him and keeping his head next to Gordon Ryan's head. Here again, Gordon Ryan elevates Shandy, preparing his back step, but can't quite move his head because of Shandy's right underhook. That's all folks, hope you guys have enjoyed this study, and please subscribe to my channel for more good stuff.